Okay, so previously we talked about this concept of a monochromator, and we said that the monochromator is nothing really too fancy. It just takes the white that's given, it makes sure that it's cleaned up, it makes sure that there's only one wavelength that's presented to the detector, and eventually the detector will read it. And that's what we need to discuss in this video, this concept of a detector. So what is it? Well, the detector in the AA is very similar to the other spectrometers that's in our classroom and laboratory. And this detector is called a PMT. And PMT stands for Photo Multiplier Tube. So the purpose of the PMT detector is that this detector, and I'm going to put maybe my attempt of an eyeball up here at the top, and this is what I'm going to use for the detector. So that detector sees the light that's been given to the detector. And it says, okay, I see a little bit of light here. Now, what do you want me to do with it? So with the detector, it has to relay the signal to the computer. Eventually, it's got to be given to some kind of computer software or some kind of um, system that records the signal to let you know that it's seeing some stuff. The problem is that in the beginning, this signal is very weak. Okay, so we have a very weak signal that's given to the detector in the beginning of the analysis. And the purpose of the photomultiplier tube is to take this weak signal and it amplifies it. And it amplifies it in a way so that the software can relay a signal to the computer to say, I'm recording a change. I'm actually seeing a difference here when it concerns the signal of the machine. If the detector did not amplify that signal, well, the changes would be so minute that the software could not convert that over to a signal on a computer screen for you. So the photo multiplier tube basically does that job, and that's really what we're calling the detector. It sees the light that comes in, it distinguishes the difference of the light that's there before and after the sample is present, and then it relays that signal to the computer. Now, how does it do its job? Well, imagine that this is the detector chamber, and here in the beginning, there is going to be an area that's going to be loaded with electrons, all right? And these electrons I'm just going to draw as red. So the light will come in, or the signal will come in, and it will hit one of these electrons, and these electrons will be knocked off. Now, the photo multiplier, multiplier means it's going to multiply the signal and make it bigger, right? Well, how does it do that? Well, behind this first area, you've got another sliver of an area that's loaded with electrons. And this electron will basically slam into the layer behind it, and it might knock off two electrons. And then that one, that electron will knock off some more, this electron will knock off some more, because guess what? There is an area that sits behind there that's got more electrons that are loaded on it. So this electron will hit and maybe knock off a couple of more. This electron will hit, because there was two of them there, remember? And that will knock off a couple of more, and a domino reaction kind of occurs. Okay? It's a chain reaction that happens, and electrons knock off more electrons, which knock off more electrons, which knock off even more electrons, and finally, that disturbance is picked up by the software system, and it goes onto the computer screen, and that is how you see an absorbance from the actual instrument itself. Okay, so that's the photomultiplier tube, which is what we call the detector, and that is how it does its job. It's basically a little bitty light bulb, that's all that it is, or it looks like one at least, and this little bitty sensor is able to amplify the signal in such a way 
that it can create a large disturbance for the software to pick up. So PMT tube or PM tube, photo multiplier tube, and that is what we call the detector of the instrument. You might be surprised to know that these detectors can cost thousands of dollars. This little photo multiplier tube, uh, you know, these things can run $2,500 or more. And just like with a light bulb in a way, these things can go out, uh, they can stop working, and they need to be replaced. And sometimes the machine is so old that the cost of a photo multiplier tube basically um, you might as well buy a new instrument. Uh, you'll get um, a better instrument, you'll get an updated version of the instrument, and you'll get a working instrument at the same time versus paying $2,500 or more just for a PMT that needs to go into the uh, instrument itself. So uh, that's the detector. That's all there is to it. That's all that we need to go as far as detail is concerned. And then in the next video, we'll go back and we'll revisit some of the topics that need more explanation. So we've already now talked about the entire schematic of the AA instrument. So this was the diagram that we drew way back when in videos previously. And we said that we had a radiation source, which is the light bulb. We now know there's one light bulb that goes to every single metal that's out there. And this one light bulb has to be plugged in, and it gives me a specific wavelength that's very good for the metal that I'm trying to analyze. That light bulb goes into the flame, and that's what you're seeing here as basically this cloud. And we know now that it's drawn as a cloud because we're looking for free atoms. We need the atoms out of the solvent, and that's the purpose of what we call the atomizer. So the sample gets sucked up through the nebulizer tube, which is that piece of plastic. The nebulizer takes the solvent, breaks it down into really fine droplets, and then it changes it into a mist, and that mist is what's given to the flame. That flame is coming from the acetylene gas and air, or it's coming from nitrous and the air. Once the flame is occurring, different temperatures, that's why we use different gases, those free atoms are exposed to the light source, and this light source will then get absorbed by the atom inside of the flame. The wavelength selector, this is what we're calling the monochromator. And the monochromator takes that specific wavelength and it makes sure that only that one wavelength makes it to the detector. It doesn't want any outside interferences. It doesn't want anything to disturb the detector while it, do it, while, while it does its job. And that's the purpose of the monochromator and the grating that's on the inside. The monochromator then allows the light to escape, which is cleaned up, and that eventually goes to the detector, which is what we're calling the photomultiplier tube. The photomultiplier tube amplifies the signal, and that amplification is sent to the software, and that software and computer processes that information and gives you a signal that you're seeing on the computer screen. So those are the pieces and parts that are major for the AA instrument. Now, before we go on and talk about different variations of the AA, there's a couple of things that we have to mention before we go further. And I want to go back and I want to revisit one specific area for now, and that area is the radiation source. We're going to go back to the light bulb, because the light bulb is going to give me options. And we didn't want to tell you about these options in the beginning because we just wanted to keep it simple. And we wanted you to get a really good feel about what the instrument's doing and how all the pieces fit together. But there's options almost in every one of these categories. And the most important option that you need to know about is the radiation source or the light bulb area. So in the next video, we're going to talk about this option. We're going to talk about the purpose of while I have this option and what it can do for me. 
So, don't stop now. Come back, watch the next video. Don't let me leave you hanging. And we'll talk about the light source and a little bit piece of the light source that's pretty important, but we left it out for simplicity a couple of videos back.